my name is Rina. I'm a product engineer at Intercom, and I talk about the Stateful Eight. Who has seen the movie knows that there are not eight chapters, but I have eight slides about state machines. Stateful Eight. Um, so the reason why I want, I just want to give a, sh a nice shout out to a nice a little library we used recently in work. Um, so we're working on a project right now, which is in beta, where you wait for a certain user response and then it shows a message. It doesn't sound very exciting, but there's a lot of complexity about it because you need to know um, which state the um, user interface is in, which type of events happen, and how do you write this in a non-convoluted and testable manner. We had all kinds of ideas and we decided for state machines at the end because like, um, so state machines, if you remember your computer science, they are computational abstractions that have very defined, very well defined um, properties such as they have a finite number of states, they can only be in one state at a time and they can change from one state to another by triggering events or conditions. Um, and if you search on NPM for a state machine, you get tons of libraries but we decided finally for um, StateJS by hopefully I pronounce it now correctly, David Mikita Jones. And we decided for it because it's an actively developed project. So for example, Cormac um, put in a pull request and he immediately um, uh, put it on. There's no external de dependencies. It's well documented. It allows hierarchical state machines and multiple languages like .NET and JavaScript. Um, just a very quick example, how you define your state. So, um, it's very easy, you, you include it in your app, you create all your states, there is a pseudo state kind, you need one pseudo state kind, and then you just define your states, let's say state A and state B. And uh, you define transitions between the states, for example, in here you go, you have two state transitions, one from an initial state to state A, and one from state A to state B, when a certain function or when a certain event happens. Um, you initialize the state machine and the model, um, also really easy, uh, easy readable code. And the last bit is you trigger transitions and define entry and ex uh, exit states on these um, states. So you can um, trigger transitions by evaluating the model and the state machine instance, and then you can define entry and exit um, functions on these states. So what have we learned? Um, they definitely make your code easier to read and easier to manage and testable but beware of turning everything into state machine abstractions. Unfortunately, I forgot the thank you slide, so it would be stateful nine. So consider, the, consider this the thank you slide as well. Thanks, guys. Okay.